Hello everybody and welcome back to this video. Today I'm going to do a highly requested part two of my Adobe Premiere tutorial video for beginners. So in this video, you're gonna be able to go from beginner to more advanced, right? I'm going to teach you some of the most um, valuable skills that I think can take you uh, from beginner to uh, you know intermediate to advanced editor. Uh, these are all tools that are going to make your job as an editor a lot easier. So I hope you are going to get value out of this video and let's get straight into it. Skill number one that I think every advanced editor must learn is keyframing. So keyframing is basically uh, animating a certain effect or changing its va uh, volume or uh, changing its value over time, right? So for example, I have this clip right here and let's say I wanted to go from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. I'm first gonna make it a bit smaller and then uh, I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip, right? Where I wanted to start the animation and I'm gonna put it uh, right here, align it with the edge of this uh, of the image. And then um, the way I'm going to animate this is I go to position, which is the effect I want to change uh, or animate over time. And then I click on toggle animation by clicking on this little hourglass, um, right? And then I'm going to go to the part where I want the animation to end, which is going to be at the end in this case. And I will change the position uh, to be in the part where I want the animation to end. As you can see, it has created these uh, two keyframes. I can actually move these around to make the animation uh, slower or faster. So if, so if I want it to be slower, I will just put it more towards the end, the second keyframe. And if I want it to be faster, I will pull it more closer to the beginning. This is what we have created by just doing this. As you can see now, the image goes from the left to the right. You can not only do this with the position of the clip, but with basically almost every single effect that Premiere Pro has, and not only videos, but also text and animations. So this, um, if you learn how to do this, it's going to give you a lot of creative freedom as an editor. So that's why I think learning how to do keyframing, practicing it is a very, very uh, valuable skill set. I'm gonna show you how you can use it on a different effect. So I'm going to use it, for example, on opacity. So let's say I want the video to go from dark to bright over time and I want to make that animation. I can just go to the beginning of the, of the clip where I want the animation to begin, put opacity at 0%, click the toggle animation hourglass and go to where I want it to be, you know, back to 100%, uh, put the uh, value of opacity at 100 and as you can see, we have created our animation again and we have this nice revealing effect. If I want um, to create a zoom effect, I go to scale where I want the effect to begin, go to where I want it to end, I um, scale it up or, or you can also, you know, zoom out. And now I have made a bunch of animations to this already. It's, it's zooming in, it's uh, becoming brighter at the same time. I could even make it pan from left to right or whatever, because um, this keyframing um, thing allows you to do a lot of creative things, like I said. The next skill set that I'm going to show you is how to edit to the music a lot faster than if you were to do it manually. So that brings us to the sponsor of this video, Epidemic Sounds, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. So thank you so much, Epidemic. Now I have been using Epidemic Sound for almost five years at this point, which is pretty crazy. I have used them in plenty of my own personal YouTube videos and on client videos as well. And the good thing about them is that you basically pay a monthly subscription fee instead of having to license all individual songs for you know potentially even thousands of dollars and they have really affordable rates for licensing monthly uh, music for your YouTube videos and the cool thing is once um, you have your subscription all the videos that you use the songs that they provide 
are not going to get flagged even if you cancel your subscription in the future. Now they actually offer a free 30 day plan for anybody who signs up in the link in the description below. And the cool thing about that is it basically gives you a month to try it out and see if you like it personally. And even if you don't end up uh, paying for the plan afterwards, your videos that you have created in this time period are still not going to get flagged. They have a ton of different songs that you can choose from. I think it's over like 30,000 uh, individual tracks and over 90,000 sound effects so you can also get your sound effects from them so if you're interested in getting your music from epidemic sounds for all your social media projects and even client projects then check them out in the description below so here's how you can become a lot faster at editing to the beat uh, with your music so first you want to find a part that actually has you know uh, beats in it so I'm uh, gonna make my clip start here and then uh, let me just bring that to the beginning of the sequence. And now I'm going to press uh, M on my keyboard to put a marker at every single beat, okay? So you will need to do some practicing to be able to nail this all the time. Even I'm not that good at it, to be honest. Um, but you can always also adjust your marker so it's not the end of the word. But uh, this is kind of what you want to do. Okay, so basically all I did uh, was go on my timeline, listen to your music over and over again, and hit M whenever um, the beat hits in the song. I tried my best, but this is actually a very difficult song in my opinion to hit the beat on. Uh, but anyways, so you wanna put these markers, uh, you wanna make sure when you're putting the markers, um, your song is not selected, because otherwise it's not gonna work. And then next, you want to come here, to where all your footage is right um so you go you know wherever if you have your b-roll for example in fol folder you open it up you want to have the um, uh, the icon view in my opinion and then here you want to select um all the in and out points on these clips so whatever part you want to be included in the montage so for example uh if i want uh this one to start here I'm going to press I on my keyboard to set the in point. I'm gonna go to where I want it to end. Let's say here, I'm gonna press O on my keyboard. So I set the in and out points of that clip. And now only that part is going to be included in the montage. You want to do that for each and every single one of these clips. Now, after that, you want to select uh, all the clips that you want to have in the, um, in the montage, right? Uh, by, uh, you can select them by um, just simply either uh, going back to the list view and uh, you know clicking on the first one and then holding shift and clicking on the last one now you have all of them selected after this you want to go to clip and then you want to go to automate to sequence you want to make sure that your play hat is at the beginning of your whole sequence and then here you want to um, either order them by sort order or by selection order. I like to use selection order. So it's basically just going to be deciding like what order the clips are placed, right? So for example, here, my, uh, I'm going to use the order of my selection. If you want to change the order of your selection, you can do that very easily by just, you know, clicking on a, a them e after each other. Uh, and now here you want to put at unnumbered markers for the placement uh, and for the method keep it override edit You want to use in and out range and then I like to click ignore audio as well And now if you click ok as you can see it has put um, all these scripts at these unnumbered markers uh, or the markers that I put on the clip and uh, basically it did like a whole bunch of editing for us. So as you can see, now that I have all these clips already like cut up uh, to the beat. Okay, the next thing I want to show you guys is how to delete any unused files so you can free up some space on your computer. Now, if you're a video editor, like storage can become a problem, especially if you don't have a computer with a huge uh, SSD or hard drive. So uh, here's how you can delete all the unused files from Premiere so you have enough uh, space on your computer. So you want to go to um, preferences and you want to go to media cache 
and then here at media cache you um, basically can set up a couple of things so first of all you can just remove media cache files here um, so you want to you know just select delete unused media cache files and then click on it and as you can see now basically I have already emptied my media cache so your media cache is all the render files it's all the it's basically uh, the files that Adobe Premiere Pro creates for itself so it can run smoothly and uh, you know feel free to delete this every once in a while because a lot of the ones that you don't use are from just older projects and they are just taking up space on your computer unnecessarily so you can just come here anytime you need it um, to free up some space and delete it you can also go to your media cache files by you know clicking on this and uh, as you can see this is where they you know usually are you can see they are not big uh, files for me anymore because I just deleted them um, but they can become big like uh, pretty fast um, now you can also set up your media cache management so basically if you want you can just click um, automatically delete cache file files older than 90 days and then you know every 90 days you will uh, delete the ones that are older than that okay so the next effect i want to show you guys is speed remapping so speed remapping is a really cool feature in adobe premiere and basically the uh, way it works is you just you know put a clip on your timeline it's a good idea to expand the video track so you can uh, see it well and then uh, you want to click on this little FX uh, button here in the top left corner and then you want to go to uh, time remapping speed and now as you can see you have this line on the middle of the clip now if you want to make a change to the speed of the clip somewhere uh, you just go to where you want the changing point to be and you hit command or control on your uh, keyboard and add the extra point to it and for example now one thing I can do is make the speed a lot faster here uh, let's say after this point and now as you can see uh, here it's playing at 100% and then it speeds off uh, real quick and if I wanted to go back let's say into slow motion I can add another point here uh, bring it down all the way to whatever let's just do 47% and now it goes from uh, fast to slow and uh, and you can also ease out kind of these transitions so it doesn't happen so abruptly if that makes sense we have the waves I'm gonna click on the FX button time remapping speed now I have that, I'm gonna add the point here, add another point here, I'm gonna make the middle part, uh, let's just make it slower actually. Um, so I'm gonna make that slower, I'm gonna make these parts um, faster, I'm going to uh, click on this uh, arrow thing uh, and drag it out so it becomes more uh, eased in and eased out. And as you can see now it goes into just super slow motion and then speeds up again you can use this time remapping feature of premiere to create transitions so for example if you speed up the end of one clip and then beginning of one clip and then goes back to normal you can create a nice transition that way uh, there are a lot of cool ways to use this and i think it is uh, one of those things you should learn because uh, it's a very fun effect and uh, a lot of people use it quite often uh, and it can create some very nice visuals okay the next thing that a lot of professional editors do is they set their own uh, keyboard shortcuts so uh, to do that in premiere what you want to do is you want to go to uh, adobe premiere um, keyboard shortcuts and uh, yeah this is basically where you can set your shortcuts um, now here are all the comments that you can do with premiere as you can see there are so many of them and uh, if you want to set a shortcut for one of them you can just go here and uh, add the new one let's say i want to have the selection tool on uh, shift plus s um, now it looks like it already is um, assigned to something so i can do shift caps lock okay let me uh add a new one i can do shift control option s 
and uh, I can set my selection tool to that as well. Now, obviously you wouldn't do that because that would be just way too complicated, but you can set up shortcuts here for literally every single thing. And you can also uh, remove their uh, default shortcuts and add the new one instead of it, uh, or you know do whatever you want really. Uh, and you can also set up like, um, uh, Final Cut Pro shortcut. So if you're used to use, uh, if you're used to editing in Final Cut, you can import those shortcuts as well or that layout. So there are a lot of ways to use this. Um, and uh, yeah, I highly recommend checking out at least what kind of comments they have. And maybe if um, you're used to a different editing software again, and and you want to use some different shortcuts, like you can do that here in the keyboard shortcut section of Premiere. Okay, the last effect I'm going to show you guys uh, in this video is how to blur things out, uh, such as license plates or faces or anything like that. Okay, so. I am uh, first going to add an effect to my video. So I'm going to want to blur out the license plate of this uh, nice red Lamborghini Huracan. Uh, and so I'm going to add a Gaussian blur effect to this clip. And as you can see, now I um, added the blur effect to it here. And I'm going to uh, select the Gaussian blur and then go to uh, create a four point polygon mask. Now, if you want to blur out something like a face, you might want to use um, something like the rounded mask. Uh, and as you can see, you can change the shape of your mask very, very easily here in Premiere. Now I have, uh, you know, adjusted it to fit the license plate of the Lambo. So I am going to uh, make the, um, I'm going to make the blurriness a little bit higher. So it actually blurs the license plate. So as you can see, I just did that. And now here's the very cool feature of Premiere. Basically, I can just go here to mask one, as you can see, which I set for the Gaussian blur effect. And I can click on track selected mask forward. And it's basically going to track the uh, movement of that object that you want to blur, or if it's a face, like it's going to track the face and blur it for you. So you don't really need to do anything. And if you don't have a ton of movement in your video, then it's going to be very accurate most of the time. So as you can see, um, I just uh, had it track like a 13 second video and uh, boom, now I have the license plate fully you know, covered, no one can see it, and it follows the movement of the camera uh, very smoothly and uh, very accurately. You can do this with all sort of effects, not just, you know, uh, blur, but basically everything that you can create a mask for. So doing masks and uh, tracking uh, your masks can be one way to, you know, again, have a lot more creative freedom as an editor. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new from it. Uh, if you want to see a part three, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, I would love to, you know, show you guys some more things as well. If you have anything specific you want to learn, then let me know. Um, and also, if you are looking to get Premiere Pro, link is in the description. If you get it through that link, it supports the channel and I highly appreciate it. Uh, and if you are looking for high quality copyright free music for your videos, um, so you can, you know, live out your creativity and create the kind of videos that you really want to, then check out Epidemic Sound in the description below as well. And I will see you guys in the next one.